Hey guys, it's Stephanie and I wanted to do a video to talk about all of the new additions to my bookshelves. I'm so excited. Throughout the year, I don't really buy a lot of books. I'll maybe pick up a book if I see it at the bookstore, but I don't do really big hauls all that often, you know, unless it's my birthday or I get money that I can specifically spend on books, which doesn't happen that often. It happens basically my birthday and Christmas. So I'm really excited. I totally went crazy. I took advantage of the book outlet sale they were having for Boxing Day. Also, I am sorry for my voice. I'm still in the process of getting over a cold and I like just got my voice back. So I'm not sounding a hundred percent, but guys, I wanted to talk about these. And I got a ring light. So the lighting on this may be crazy while I'm still figuring things out. So just bear with me on a few fronts with this. So I'll start with my book outlet books first. But one of the books I picked up was Stephen King's Nightmares and Dreamscapes. I've been really loving these paperback editions that they have, the Stephen King books, and I've really been wanting this collection. So I was really excited to see it and I cannot wait to dig in. One of my goals this year was to read more books in translation and since a lot of my reading is horror I wanted to definitely go out of my way to try to find more horror in translation specifically so I picked up Frankenstein in Baghdad and this is translated from Arabic so I'm really excited to get to this. I know this is probably a little more on the literary side than the horror side, but I am excited to read this. Next up, I picked The Family Plot by Sherry Priest. I also definitely wanted to focus on reading more horror by female authors, and Sherry Priest was someone I hadn't checked out yet. I know this is about a band, and I think it might also be a haunted house story. I'm excited because I really like haunted house stories, and I've never checked anything out by Sherry Priest. She does also have a new book coming out this year, so I wanted to read something from her backlist before checking out her new stuff. Um, I also picked up Lost Boy by Christina Henry. I don't know if this is necessarily horror. I know this is kind of like a dark fairy tale origin story, and this is the origin stories of Captain Hook. Um, fairy tales usually aren't my thing, I've noticed, but I definitely want to try to explore that a little more, and I've really been curious about Christina Henry books. Um, I definitely also want to read Alice, which was her book about Alice in Wonderland that I know I've heard from a lot of people gets pretty dark and deals with some grim subject matter. So I'm curious to see how dark Lost Boy is going to go. Um, I also picked up Only the Dead No Burbank by Bradford Tatum. And I have never even heard of this book. I've never even seen it come across my radar at all. It seems to be a dark story about a girl getting into the film industry in like the early stages of horror movies. And so I think it's going to be kind of like an alternate history, which will be really fun and exciting. And I love when horror plays with the idea of horror cinema and characters being involved in horror movie making in some way. We did a whole episode about it on Books in the Freezer and it's just like one of those really weird subgenres that really works for me. More translated fiction, I picked up The Diving Pool by Yoko Ogawa. I read her short story collection Revenge last year or in 2017 and I really enjoyed it. Um, I will say her type of horror is definitely more subtle and a little more on the literary side so that's basically what I'm expecting going into this, but I definitely liked her writing and her storytelling. And then I've picked up two books that I've already read because I do so much of my reading through library and through audiobooks that sometimes I end up having favorites that I don't actually own a copy of and I want to talk about them and hold them and flip through them and I realize I don't have them. So I picked up The Last Days of Jack Sparks by Jason Arnott because this was one of my favorites from 2018. I absolutely loved it. I loved just the character of Jack Sparks and how unlikable he was and playing with the narrative in this like posthumous manuscript and the whole thing felt like a found footage film and I just 100% recommend this if you want a if you want a horror book that has interesting characters but actually has like really genuinely creepy moments, I definitely suggest checking this out. I absolutely loved it. So that is The Last Days of Jack Sparks by Jason Arnott. I also picked up Hex by Thomas Old Hoivald. This is actually translated from the Dutch. So this is even more horror in translation, um, but I already read this and I really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to enjoy it. This is about a small town that has been hiding the fact that they have been cursed and have been haunted by a witch for over 200 years and the young people in the town are growing tired of it and want to fight back against this curse. 
and what happens when they decide to do that. This was really good. If you want like a dark story about witches and curses that isn't like fun or paranormal or like cozy in any way, like a dark, like the witch is not the protagonist in the story type of deal, I definitely suggest checking this out. And a book that I've been wanting to read for a long time is Mongrels by Stephen Graham Jones. I read his novella Mapping the Interior I think last year or the year before and just was blown away by it. He's such a great writer and I know this is a coming-of-age story about a boy that comes from a family of werewolves and I'm just really excited to see what he does with that. I know a lot of people really like this and werewolf fiction is something I really haven't gone much into. I haven't really dipped my toes into and I really am curious how I'm gonna like it just because it is such a big horror fiction thing that I'm not that familiar with. So this is Mongrels by Stephen Graham Jones. So I also got an Amazon gift card and I decided to buy some horror short story collections. Like seriously, every single one of these is a short story collection. And I'm really excited. I think I definitely want to read at least one short story collection per month this year because one, I bought so many and two, like I found I really enjoy them. So I picked up North American Lake Monsters by Nathan Ballingrude. I think I saw Beth over at Read Remark talk about this and I recently read a short story by Nathan Ballingrude called The Visible Filth that I think is getting a movie adaptation this year um, and was really impressed by it so I decided to pick this up. Also I absolutely love this cover. Ever since I saw it, I think a few years ago, I've been really intrigued by it. So I just, I decided just to pick it up. <laughs> this is one I picked up because I saw it. I think it was on Barnes and Noble's list of like the best horror of 2018. Unfortunately, the copy I picked up was like used. And I think I said acceptable instead of like, like new. And it shows, it literally looks like it was stabbed right there. Like completely. I don't know if you can see, but Anyway, this is The Mary Spinster by Mallory Ortberg, Tales of Everyday Horror. I know this leans a little more into the fantastical and almost fairy tale side of horror that I mentioned I want to explore a little more this year. Um, I wish I would have gotten a better copy of this, but I don't think I paid a lot for it, so I'm not being too picky. Uh, but I'm really excited to get into this. I've never read anything else by Mallory Ortberg. I don't think I've even heard of her outside of this collection, so... I'm purely picking this up because I saw it on that Barnes and Nobles list and it, you know, was completely off my radar. So hopefully this is good. I picked up The Fiends in the Furrows. This is an anthology. So this is an anthology of folk horror. So these are several authors that have contributed stories. These aren't all stories by the same author, which has been the case for the other ones. And this is an anthology of folk horror, which I've enjoyed the few times that I've picked up books that are considered folk horror, like uh, Thomas Tryon's Harvest Home. Folk horror is really interesting because I'm really interested in what the parameters are of folk horror. Like, what are the characteristics of a folk horror story? I know they aren't necessarily all about harvest. They're a, I want to say, a specific type of occult stories that have to do with relationships and ceremonies and rituals with the earth. I'm interested to see where we go with that. Um, I know I saw the Ladies of Horror Fiction review this anthology and ever since I saw it I immediately added it to my TBR and I picked it up when I had a gift card. So this is The Fiends in the Furrows. I also picked up We Are Where the Nightmares Go by C. Robert Cargill. I completely picked this up because of the cover. I just really like it. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the author other than he wrote a science fiction book called Sea of Rust. So I don't know if this is necessarily horror or if this is like, I'm gonna guess from this picture, like Lovecraftian or like weird with a capital W. Um, so I am kind of going into this blind. This was completely a cover buy. And I picked up one last short story collection on Amazon and that was Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. She is an Argentinian writer. So many people have told me that I need to pick this up. Um, I know like Michael at Knowledge Lost has been trying to get me to read this. And when we interviewed Paul Tremblay on our podcast, he said this was one of his favorites. And it was nominated for a Shirley Jackson Award. And I've actually heard a lot of people say that a lot of these stories have a Shirley Jackson kind of flair to them. 